onomatopoeic word for the sound that the guitar made. From 1959 onwards, this was all the rage. Maureen Cleave, who wrote the article, claims that the word came from the ska, ska, ska beat, which seems to nail the matter. Ding, 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 Well, it's interesting to think that I was the first person to write about it in March 1964, but in fact I'd never been to Jamaica, and I got all the information from a young man called Chris Blackwell, who came from Jamaica with a whole load of Scar records in a suitcase, and then he sold them off to record shops in the back of his mini. And then he went on to find Ireland Records and was hugely successful. Maureen Cleave may never have set foot in Jamaica, but she got the word scat into print, where it came from and the date, and that's what the OED loves. But in Kingston, everyone has an origin theory. It's just who to believe. I'll tell you where Ska came from. Ska came from my husband, Clement Seymour Dodd. Whenever he used to be in the studios with his musicians, he would just come in and he has an idea, and he would just come in and say, sk, 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 just to get the beat, and you would hear the music going the same way. Yeah, that's it. Ska was ideal for jazz musicians to play. A solid beat, held down by the bass and drums, the louder horns, plenty of space to improvise. And it's from the world of jazz, but a second fairy emerges. The Dictionary of Caribbean English Usage, also published by Oxford University Press, suggests that the word may come from scat singing, a style made famous by Louis Armstrong. Do you remember that big monkey in the Jungle Book? Scooby doo bop doo I want to be like you. Who bop doo doo bop That's Ska. Ah, that is a good idea. You are right in saying, when I hear the jazz singers singing like Louis Armstrong, they do everything with their mouths, that is a musical instrument. So the Ska could have been how the artists express how they wanted the music to sound. Present! Ska's heyday was in the early 60s. Jamaica gained independence from the British Empire in 1962 and the music was the soundtrack to a new era of optimism on the island. The third theory I've heard is that the word derives from a greeting used by one of Clement Dodd's friends, the musician Cluid J. Johnson. Two J, the late Dwight Johnson. Uh, when me and Mr. Dodd, sometimes they were in the bar drinking, and he would say, Scavulde, Scavulde, Scavulde. It came from Scavulde. It's an abbreviation of Scavulde. I knew Dwight Johnson. I knew about his uh, term Scavulde but I don't think it was the beginning of Ska. What I've come to realize is that the fierce competitions of the early days of Ska still exist. Though now, it's about fixing the history of who invented what first. We are not finished yet. There's one more theory. Prince Buster insists that only he knows the true origin of the word, that Ska was born on the corner of Luke Street and Orange Street in downtown Kingston. How the word came to the dance hall? We had a friend named Scatter. Right? It came off of his name. Don't make them tell you the foolishness about it come. It come off of Luke Lee and Shire Street. Scatter name. It just after him, Scat means move. I was telling Duke with Dan Coxon, I have come, move, S-K-A, scat. It came from right here, 
Don't make nobody change your mouth and tell you about there is any other music street. There is only one music street. What name? Harren Street! Oh no, I won't be the one. You know what? I think all four theories have something going for them. Prince Buster scat scattering the opposition reminds us of the intense rivalry of the early sound systems. Scat to scat suggests the jazz element and Scavuvi was the private language of some of the musicians that played it. And as so many people have told me, scat 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 was the sound of the guitar. But isn't that how words work? Hard to pin down, but highly evocative of the time and place where they were formed. Unearthed all sorts of very plausible theories for Scar, nothing written. Tanya, you're a, the queen of etymology. Jamaica, it's a laid-back culture. How good is there anecdotal evidence? Um, anecdotal evidence is great. Um, in terms of etymology, um, it's very difficult for us to use anecdotal evidence that doesn't come supported by the documentary evidence, but it's useful in terms of indicating to us where we might look for further citations. It's definitely a, a very difficult area, and yeah, so hence our, our orig origin unknown. Well, more definitely, we do have an anti-dating. The OED currently has September 1964. We've pushed it all the way back to March 1964. May just be six months, but I am grateful for small triumphs. So it's only six months difference, Peter, but a triumph's a triumph. Is it a triumph? The earliest printed evidence, even if it's only slightly earlier than we've already got, that's what we like. So this is an improvement on what we already have. If the OED has, I've got the entry here, September 1964, and this takes it back to March, that's an antedating. Unambiguous, there it is, the Daily Gleaner, uh, Kingston, Jamaica's newspaper. The date, it's all there in black and white. Can I just say, not only have we got an earlier example, we've also got mm. in that example a um, mention of the, th of the theory that was pervasive at the time. So I think that would push me towards sort of st stating perhaps slightly more strongly that the, the word uh, is imitative of the distinctive guitar sound of the music. Etymologically, it, it's good news, I think. So what's the verdict? Um, our previous first example was from America, so that could have give, given the impression that it was uh, as a term that was, that was maybe invented in America for a kind of Jamaican music, which had a different name in Jamaica. But this actually puts it squarely back in Jamaica, which is good. So, yeah, we'll include the um, anti-dating and we'll adjust the etymology to make it slightly clearer. So, yeah, this one's in. Advertising slogans are usually born in trendy urban workspaces among high-powered men who have brainstorming sessions and go for long lunches.